Hello adventure seekers, welcome to the first episode here in Tenerife. Today I am going to take you through a tour of an island in the Atlantic Ocean that is way more than sun-kissed beaches and swaying palm trees. Let's dive deep into the rich and diverse history of Tenerife. I will tell you all about the mysterious Guanche people to the dynamic cultural fusion that the island has become today. The Canary Islands are located in the Atlantic Ocean, not far away from the coast of Africa. But they do belong to Spain. That has not always been this way. I am currently in La Laguna, which is a city of Tenerife that used to be the capital of the island when it was first conquered by the Spanish in 1496. The city used to be its political, economical and cultural center of the island. The colonial architecture that you can see in the historical center of La Laguna served as an example for many cities that have later been built by the Spanish in America. Until today, you can still visit a lot of historical places here in La Laguna, such as churches, cathedrals, and a lot of historical colonial streets. The center of La Laguna is not too big, so that you can easily walk through it. You can enter quite a lot of places for free and appreciate the beautiful colonial architecture. I was surprised that La Laguna had quite a few impressive churches, despite being a rather small town. I am now in the bell tower of the church La Concepcion. This church is in the historical center of La Laguna and it gives you a beautiful overview over the whole city. From up here you can see the colonial streets and the architecture that is typical for this area of La Laguna. As mentioned before, La Laguna used to be the capital of Tenerife. Today, the capital is Santa Cruz. But what happened here actually before the Spanish have arrived? About 25 million years ago, there were volcanic eruptions below the sea that caused magma to evolve and to create these seven islands, the seven islands of the Canary Islands. It is definitely worth to come here to La Laguna and spend some time here to explore the colonial architecture and streets of the city. But there are a lot of more historical places here on the island of Tenerife and we are going to explore them right now. So obviously the Canary Islands are very old and there are a lot of historical places here on the island that prove its age. One of them, for example, is this tree here behind me. It's the Millennial Dragon Tree here on Tenerife. This tree is more than 1000 years old, although the correct age cannot be exactly defined. It has a height of 20 meters and a perimeter of 10 meters. The tree itself is huge and due to its age, a very holy place here on the island. You can find many of those dragon trees on the Canary Islands, but this one is meant to be the oldest one. These trees are a divine place for the Canary Islands. That is because, according to a legend, the Aborigines of Tenerife believed that a dragon, once he died, converted into one of those trees. Since this tree here behind me is the oldest dragon tree existing on the Canary Islands, it became an important symbol for Tenerife. Let's dive a bit more into what happened before the Spanish took over the Canary Islands. In the first century AD, a Roman historian made an expedition to the Canary Islands and he returned impressed by the number of wild dogs that lived here on the islands. That word translated into Latin is canis and that term is the origin of their name for the Canary Islands. And as often in history, the Spanish were not the first ones that decided to settle down here on the Canary Islands. When the Spanish arrived in the 15th century, there were already Aborigines here on the Canary Islands. Those were called Los Guanches. Los Guanches lived from agriculture here on Tenerife. They had their own gods. For example, they believed that in the Teide there lived a demon that spit out lava once he got angry. According to a DNA analysis that has been taken from the skull of Guanche people here in Tenerife and also from Gran Canaria, the origin of the Guanche people is in the north of Africa. 
It is believed that the Guanche population totaled more or less 30,000 individuals on Gran Canaria and Tenerife. That was before the conquest of the Spanish. The Guanches of Tenerife divided the island into nine kingdoms, each one with an own king. So the statues that you can see here behind me represent those nine kingdoms of the Guanches. In 1494, Tenerife was the only unconquered Canary Island. The Spanish have brought diseases with them to the island that weakened the Guanches even more. After a lot of battles, the Guanches in the end had to give in to the Spanish and the Spanish took over also here in Tenerife in 1496. But how did Tenerife become one of the most important touristical places of Spain? We are now at the viewpoint of Alexander von Humboldt, which was a German explorer who came here to Tenerife in 1799. He explored the island briefly, he went to the Teide and he stayed in Puerto de la Orotava, which today is known as Puerto de la Cruz and we can see it here in the background. He spent some time here on the island and explored it and he said that this island has some of the most impressive landscapes that he has ever seen. His word spread around Europe and that was basically the start for tourism here on the Canary Islands. At the beginning it was basically only for the rich people and then little by little developed more and more into a touristic place for everybody. The view over the Orotava Valley from the viewpoint was absolutely stunning. But let's have a closer look at La Orotava. La Orotava is not only famous for its impressive views, it is also a really nice town with the colonial architecture that we have already seen in La Laguna. There are a lot of historical places and it is a beautiful town, so I recommend you to spend some time here as well. As mentioned before, the first capital of Tenerife was La Laguna, but when the Canary Islands were declared a province in 1821, the capital of Tenerife became Santa Cruz. Due to disputes between the two main islands, Gran Canaria and Tenerife, the province of the Canary Islands has been divided into two. Tenerife, La Gomera, La Palma and a Hierro formed the western part of the province of the Canary Islands. All right, it's time to close the history class for today. I really hope you learned a few things about Tenerife and its history. I hope you enjoyed this little tour through history. If you did, I would highly appreciate your support. Make sure to leave me a like. And I have a few next videos prepared for you to show you the most epic places here on Tenerife to get you inspired for your own trip to Tenerife. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to not miss out on the next videos and I'll see you there.